I've spoken about the design principles which are very central to everything we do in permaculture but there's a deeper foundation on which those 12 design principles rest and that's the, the three ethics of permaculture. We don't see these as unique to permaculture but they are a reinterpretation of uh, basic ethical frameworks that can be seen in every traditional society on the planet in the past and also in the various experiments and successes in some case failures in others of over the last hundred years to create intentional communities. They've all been underpinned by some ethical framework. So this distinguishes permaculture from simply design tools that we can use for good or ill, that we are obliged to understand them in terms of these three simple ethics of care of the earth, care of people and fair share. Now, everyone's got their own interpretations of these ethics and we can't say there is an exact you know, permaculture interpretation because there are more questions that we are obliged to consider in everything we do than answers. But if we look at the uh, first principle of care of the earth, modern people tend to think of that through the image of spaceship earth and maybe the the slightly image of the earth in hands. That is of some use but it tends to overstate humans power in guiding this four billion year old living earth whereas we are really just a very small part of this system. I tend to think of care of the earth as being care of the earth under our feet, care of soil. Firstly, because that is something that we actually have the power to do something about. Some territory that we are responsible for, a piece of land. And that soil is arguably the deepest expression of the mystery of life, at least life out of the, its ocean origins to when life came out on the land. The first thing life did was create soil. And it's the, still the deepest mystery to, um, to science. It's really the core of the older environmental thinking that permaculture rests on coming out of the organic movement, going back almost 100 years of this reverence for soil. And it really does determine to a great extent the fate of future generations is the condition of the soil. Now, there's all sorts of complex technical aspects behind that um, and how we care for the soil is a complex and uncertain thing that we have to come back to. But uh, that's one very simple grounded way of what does care of the earth mean. Similarly, when we say care of people, sometimes people can assume how do we care for the six and a half billion people on the planet? I tend to interpret it as care of the self, kin and community. Again, some territory that you have some responsibility and some power to influence. Because especially for the billion or so middle class people on the planet who are the engine of global destruction, more so than the five billion uh, poorer people and more so than the elite who are so few in number that they don't really make much direct impact. That the billion or so middle class people on the planet, through not dealing with their own internal genuine needs, the need to belong, the need to um, uh, look after oneself and others around one, leads to this consumption acquisitive economy that is driven by advertising propaganda and, and other things. So when we look after ourselves genuinely at real needs, not imagined needs, and take responsibility for those around us, we are actually making it more possible for everyone to look after themselves. So the uh, social justice slogan about um, live simply so others may simply live uh, brings us really into that third ethic of, of fair share. 
And that's in a, in a way the most complex of the three uh, ethics because it involves notions of limits, the limits to consumption and the limits to reproduction. How many people can the earth support? Um, how many people can any place support in real terms? But there are limits to everything. And we must recognise and consider those limits even if we don't know exactly what they are. We must consider them all the time. But at the same time, there's the awareness about the abundance of nature. And the abundance of nature is what gives us the confidence to give away surplus beyond our circle of reciprocity, beyond one's kin and community, which is awareness about, oh, but they'll do something for us later on. Giving away beyond that with no expectation of getting something back because one has that sense that nature is providing. So a sense of abundance and an awareness of limits, which actually looks like a contradiction, a paradox, and it is. And that's what's good about it because it brings you back to thinking about it all the time. There's no answer to it. And that's, that's the purpose of an ethic requiring you to think, not that there's an answer. Because as soon as you've got the answer and you've got it packed away, then you don't have to worry about it anymore and you don't have to revisit it and you're hitting into the problem territory again. Whereas when you are constantly dealing with these issues, constantly reviewing them, well, is this care of the earth, care of people, and is it fair share? That's the way I would see permaculture ethics. The attraction of permaculture in the late 1970s, especially amongst young people, my peers then, as I was only in my early 20s, uh, was that it was applying environmental thinking to how to create the world we wanted rather than fight against the world we didn't. And that was something that both myself and Bill Mollison, accepting that he was a generation older than me, both of us had already, in our different ways, come to the conclusion that oppositional environmentalism was really a limited project about trying to stop the world we didn't want and that we had to create the world we did want. Um, and I think that is, was primarily what was inspirational to other people and has remained so throughout this time because if you look at that dilemma between the stopping the world we don't want and creating the world we do want, there are those two sides in environmental activism. But the general application of the positive side has been, well, you've got to work within the corporate system with government policies at this very large scale level. Uh, so there's this enormous sense of compromise and contradiction and they're the realities that you must deal with. Whereas permaculture was saying, no, do it here now, starting at the bottom with ourselves, with providing our immediate needs and that being a model for larger community and network uh, growth from the bottom up. 